Hello, you're watching Deal Flow, the CNBC Africa show that brings you insight on Africa's deal makers, big and small. I'm Erica van der Marwe. The surprise announcement by South African online retailers Kalahari and Take A Lot that they are merging generated much analysis of the local online industry and its ability to cope with a very competitive global online market. Joining me today to look at the strategic and financial viability of this deal are Chris Gilmore from the Barclays Africa Group and from our Cape Town studio, Omri Thomas, who's from ABAX Investments. Welcome, lovely to have you here. So Chris, if you, if you look at the, the online market, whether it's local, international, hugely competitive, there's some giants at work here. So if you think of some of the, these two local players, they're big in the local context, but they really are tiny in the, in the bigger picture. Yeah, and the, the rationale for the deal, Eric, as far as I can see, is they're talking about bulking up so that they can get economies of scale. Now, as we were talking about earlier, it's, it's difficult to see uh, what uh, economies of scale are immediately apparent coming out of this. You can understand it in a more uh, traditional uh, context, but uh, in an online context, it's, it's not entirely clear what's happening here. Because uh, if you talk about the might of an Amazon, for example, by bulking up, it just means they've got twice irrelevance rather than the <laughs> relevance themselves. I'm being a bit uh, cynical, uh, you understand. Now, Omri, we don't know what the size is of this deal. They didn't have to uh, declare that. Um, but uh, you think give us as an idea of the, the per personalities, the color behind this deal. We know Nusbet is involved on the one side, on the one hand, with, uh, through Kalahari, and then Tiger Global Management, uh, the international hedge fund slash private equity fund that took uh, a, a piece of the equity uh, intake a lot. Yes, Eric, I, I think uh, just to come back to the first question we we're trying to answer, I think if you really want to compete with the global uh, competitors, you have to have, have, have bulk. And both these companies were relatively small in their own context. Um, so if Amazon really came in with full might, uh, it would have been game over for both. Both companies were also making quite uh, substantial losses. So uh, by adding the two, you're creating a bigger network effect. So hopefully that's the economies of scale that you get. So instead of dropping off one or two packages in, in a certain town, now you're doing three or four with the combined uh, um, two companies. I think if you look at the, the in, in the global context or, or more color on it, uh, Kalahari, very small in the Nospers context. It was uh, more of an irritation than, than anything else. And we take a lot, it's a, a, a big uh, part of, of Tiger's uh, portfolio. So the merger, the interesting thing about it was that they're going to keep the take a lot name uh, despite Kalahari actually having better brand recognition. And I think that's to, to uh, prove the point that take a lot's been taking a lot of market share from, from Kalahari over the last uh, a few years. So I think it's a merger that makes strategic sense. And if there's going to be a viable competitor to, to the likes of an Amazon, this, this could be it. Hmm, interesting. Contrasting views from our guests. Uh, Omri signing decidedly optimistic compared with Chris's perspective. We'll uh, look further into that. But first, we bring you a quick overview of the merger of these two online retailers. Two of South Africa's largest online retailers and long-standing adversaries have agreed to merge. Kalahari.com, owned by JSE-listed media and e-commerce group Naspas, will be folded into Takealot.com, which recently secured $100 million US dollars from investment firm Tiger Global Management. The deal with Kalahari also comes just six weeks after Takealot announced it had acquired 100% of the equity of Superbolus.com, a design and apparel online retailer founded four years ago. CEO of Take A Lot, Kim Reed, expressed his excitement about the merger, saying they will continue to put the customer first as they are the lifeblood of the business. But will the Kalahari and Take A Lot merger turn losses into gains? Only time will tell. So Chris, the Take A Lot brand will prevail, which is interesting. Kalahari has been around since I think 1998. That was my first online experience. The Take A Lot will prevail, and also the Take A Lot execs will be in charge. What does this signify? Yeah, it's saying that um, it's not necessarily a, a merger of equals. You know, Take A Lot hasn't been around for as long. Uh, not in fact, not nearly as long. But I think they've been perhaps a little bit cheekier. Uh, and certainly, as far as my recognition is concerned, I, I've been far more. Um, aware of them uh, on TV, for example, in terms of the advertising. So I think the new kids on the block, um, I think they bring a degree of, of, of energy into something that may have been to, to a certain extent lacking. But there again, you know, let's not forget that um, Kalahari is part of uh, Nas Perse, 
which is a formidable player when it comes to e-commerce. You know, we were chatting earlier about things like Spree, for example, on the clothing front. And that's just one small example. I think uh, the, the, the plan really is to get far, far, far more into this whole uh, e-commerce, this online space, uh, Naspers. But uh, recognizing that there are other players out there like Take A Lot that can bring an awful lot in, to the party as well. Mm -hmm. Omri, perhaps what Chris's last statement suggests is that there could be far more M&A activity in this online retail space. Um, so acquisitions, takeovers of uh, successful startups and perhaps also um, the establishment of new ones. Erica, I think it's, it's inevitable. Uh, eventually, the, uh, there will be one big gorilla that, that, that wins, and uh, Amazon has proven that in the, in the US. In South Africa, the, the marketplace is still very small, so that concept is, is still unproven. So I think the earlier the consolidation and the M&A happens, the, the better for the industry uh, mm -hmm. and the better for the consumer. When I mean, if you look at the kind of prices that one can uh, obtain at Take A Lot and, and Kalahari, there's a lot of investment in price, so the consumers are getting a fantastic deal um, to, to entice them to increase their, their spending uh, on, 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 uh, online um, and to also uh, increasingly move um, retail away from yeah. bricks uh, to, to online yeah. to establish that behavior uh, and ho hopefully in time. Uh, take more market share from the traditional retailing. I guess Omri, the ob obvious point there is the South African online retail market still small. So many reasons for that. So the South African market by just is smaller, but also low online penetration. But you know, to, to say the yes. obvious, the, the difficulties, the logistical difficulties, broadband, postal delivery, how does one overcome these obstacles to reach success? No, absolutely. I think uh, those, are, those are big, big obstacles. Um, I think if you look at the over the next five years, we're going to see an explosion of uh, broadband and mobile penetration, penetration, so a lot more activity on smartphones as well. The logistical nightmare uh, remains, Erica, and that's where I think it's going to be difficult for them to achieve economies of scale in the small uh, sort of uh, country towns. Um, you can get the network effect, network effect going in the, in the big cities, but it's going to remain a challenge to to get a, 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 um, a profitable model in the outlying areas. Mm -hmm. So over, t over time I would expect the model to change that there will be some delivery charges uh, added depending on, on where you live, uh, but at the moment they first want to create that, that network yeah. effect. So Chris, what's the financial viability then of this combined entity? So both have been loss making, it's difficult. Omri's outlined some of the, the concerns. What do you think? Do you think it is indeed going to be better? You, you were more cynical at the beginning. Yeah, look, I think I agree with, uh, with Omri entirely. Look, that um, we are going to follow the international trend. We were talking earlier about uh, you going to the UK, for example. You go into the store, it's very nice, uh, but their stock holding costs have come down, uh, stock holdings, should I say, have come down considerably. And the people behind the counter will now encourage you to go online. Now, once we've got confidence that we can go in online and buy something and have it delivered, again, with confidence that it is going to arrive, that it isn't going to be stolen, and the, the, the cost therein isn't going to be that high, then you'll do it more and more. So you, you can gradually move away from a situation where you're making losses to one that actually makes profit. Mm -hmm. But uh, as, as Omri says, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, and you're, you're in many ways changing a kind of cultural thing as well. Because people actually like the, the feel of going into a shop and touching things and feeling it, you know. So that will take a bit of, uh, mm -hmm. a bit of change, a bit of persuasion. Yeah. So the su suggestion from both of you is that it's, it's really viable only when there's sort of con a concentrated population with, with a working infrastructure. Now, the add-on to that then is what about other African countries where perhaps infrastructure is not as developed? Is this, this combined entity under the Take A Lot brand viable um, in, in the rest in Nigeria, in Botswana, in Ghana? If you look at the pace at which um, growth is taking place in the rest of Africa, then yes, uh, it's a no-brainer to suggest that it's, it is going to take off in Africa. And if you realize that uh, in Kenya, for example, something like 70% uh, of the, the country's GNP goes through things like M-Pesa, you've already got... Um, a, a the, the mindset. The, the, yeah, the yeah. mindset. People are embracing electronic methods of paying for things. The problem in Africa, as here, is physically getting the goods to your door. Uh, it's perhaps a, a, a slightly, it's, it's a variation in the theme there. Uh, you just physically don't have the infrastructure. Here ours is crumbling and, and falling away. Uh, but theirs it probably never really existed in the first place. So you've, you've got to construct it. And therein lies the, the problem. You're going to have to put, a, there's a layer of cost going in with courier companies, um, logistics companies. But as we were saying earlier, all the retailers from South Africa that have gone into the rest of Africa are taking the logistics companies with them. They're building up a huge amount of intelligence in all the countries into which they go. Mm -hmm. And that isn't going to be wasted, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. 
Omri, the deal is still subject to approval by the South African Competition Authorities. What's your view on how they will see this? Is this uh, will they see this combined entity as this giant within the local reta uh, online retail space, or will they see it in the context of the South African broader retail uh, space where it's relatively small? If you look at the online space, obviously these are the two dominant players. So in that space, they've actually got a big market share. But if you look at the wider uh, retail space, it's, it's actually a very small market share. And I think that's the way uh, Kalari and Takelot will, will argue, is that uh, in the end, it's a still a small percentage of the total market. And it's actually better for the consumer if, if they merge, because if, if, if both of them remain, uh, in time, one of them will fall over because it's the marketplace is not big enough for, for both to operate. So having one stronger competitor uh, perversely is actually better for the consumer in that they can more effectively compete mm. uh, with traditional retailing, bringing better prices uh, for comp uh, consumers. So in my view, if I had to take a guess on, on the viability of the merger going through, I'd say there's, there's a very uh, real mm. chance of, of it being approved. Mm. I want to close off by asking both of you, just from a portfolio management perspective. So, Omri, starting with you, you said, you know, Kalahari is tiny and now Spatch's life and probably a bit of an irritation. So, probably not much uh, significance for the bigger picture for shareholders in Spatch. But if you were to extrapolate from this, what might this mean for, for uh, uh, traders in shares and investors in South African stock? Erika, it's, it's, it's actually irrelevant uh, in, the South, in, the, in the bigger NASPERS context. NASPERS all about uh, 10 cent. Uh, Tencent making up more than 100% of, of NASPERS' market cap. So whether this deal uh, goes ahead or fails, it's not going to have a, a, a one rand's worth of effect on, on the NASPERS share price. So in the end, it's, it's noise in the bigger NASPERS picture. But I think uh, the, the one positive is that NASPERS is then looking to address some of their underperforming assets and to rather merge it with uh, something like a take lot where the chances of success and of it becoming profitable is, is bigger. So from that context, if it's a, a, a change in strategic direction, mm -hmm. I would view that as very positive. Mm -hmm. So Omri's conclusion, it's an intelligent move. Uh, Chris, anything that we could take away from this from an investment perspective? Yeah, I think, and um, we touched on it earlier, Erica. Uh, as Omri says, look, this isn't going to make any difference at all to NASPERS. I mean, you, you strip out 10 cent, you're getting the rest of, uh, ten, of, uh, of NASPERS for nothing. But I think in, in, a, in a broader context and in a, in a longer term framework, I think this whole e-commerce into the rest of the continent is going to be significant and it's going to be very, very profound. And I think uh, companies like NASPERS are going to be at the vanguard, at the forefront of all of this. And I think, again, they're, they're gathering huge intelligence and it, it won't be wasted. Chris and Omri, thank you very much for your time and for your insights. Uh, Omri Thomas is from AVAX Investments and Chris Gilmore is from the Barclays Africa Group. And from me, Erica van der Madva and the whole DealFlow team, it's goodbye for now.